I'm happy to be here. Are you guys happy to be here? <laughs> this is an awesome place. First time, this is my first time in Turkey. So I have to say this is a wonderful, wonderful place. Uh, and it's an awesome, awesome venue. And I'm so excited about being at Webit. This is an amazing place. So if you don't mind, I now live in Singapore. And in Asia, we're a big fan of what are called selfies. Everybody know what a selfie is? Yeah? You can clap, it's fine, it's fine. You can say things, it's good. So what I'm gonna do, if you don't mind, is I'm gonna take the ultimate selfie just, just for my own uh, fun here. And I'm gonna post that out to Instagram. Just bear with me, guys. I know we're running a little bit late, but uh, here we go. Am I doing this right? Everyone, you can cheer. It's okay. All right. I think I did that right. Sorry, I did it wrong. I'm supposed to press and hold. One more time, one more time. All right, that was, that was rehearsal. That was rehearsal. Let's try that again. All right. Yes. And of course, the panelists. All right, guys. Thank you so much. We're going to post this out now. And I, as I'm sitting here thinking about some of the really cool things that uh, I've reviewed on the agenda here at Webit, I can't help but think it's a really cool experience visiting the websites uh, for Webit, downloading this super cool uh, mobile app, and being able to engage and participate in a discussion with the attendees, with the vendors, with the sponsors. And what this made me start to think about was uh, really understanding about some of the different channels that Webit had to engage in. So if my presentation is going to come up here, I start to think about how Webit started to look at the mobile channels, the internet channels, and this is exactly what we are talking about with our customers, what you're talking about with your customers. All of these different channels that we need to start to look at to be able to help build a relationship. And as we look at all of these different channels and all of the different customers that come into uh, these different channels, we start to think about one thing, our customer. What is our customer thinking? Where did she buy? What did she buy? What channel did she look at? Did she look at multiple channels? Did she go at our browser, our Facebook site, our Twitter site, these different uh, experiences that she had, right? There's a lot of questions, but the one that I think I really like about this is, were we nice? Were we polite? Were we a good company and a good message? Now, one thing comes to mind as I start to look at these different channels and these various questions. It's about, did we optimize every interaction? Do we have a single client view? So that's, that's what I started to think about, right? And as I think about this, I really start to uh, want to think about how websites are built. And today, as I think about it, and I apologize, I'm going to put my phone down here. Websites today, as we know it, is just one channel. It's not about just managing your website. It's not just about building a new cool app. It's not about pushing out a message to social. Actually, we were just talking about uh, a July 4th message that was tweeted on July 7th in the US about Independence Day. It's not about looking at these as an independent channel. You have to be starting to look at this as a uh, comprehensive digital presence, a comprehensive digital experience. And then we can start to look at really being able to manage all of these various channels as a multi-channel. And as Forrester says, the multi-channel is the new norm. Being able to look 
and have that same consistent experience across all of these different channels. We, especially here in Turkey and all of these other locations within, uh, uh, within the growth markets, we are into the any challenge. Now, what is the any challenge? The any challenge is about being able to provide real time, anytime, any device, anywhere. That's what it's about. Providing that information real time, anytime, any device, anywhere. Now, the thing is, multi channel, if multi channel is the new norm, what is going to be the next best thing? How do we reinvent our relationships with our customers? It's not necessarily about providing a consistent experience across all of these different channels. It's about optimizing the relationship, optimizing the experience across these different channels. Understanding that the person looked at an ad on the browser, moved to the mobile device, decided and continued that experience, decided not to buy, went to the storefront, and the guy in the store doesn't actually say, hey, do you want to buy this? Right? Omnichannel is about building a relationship, building a relationship with our customers. Like the old school days when you could walk into a store and the store guy knew you. I grew up in Texas, so I used to go to a barber. It's a guy with clippers. And I used to go to the same barber. He knew my haircut. He knew what I wanted. He knew my name. That is building a relationship. And what we need to be able to do is build that kind of relationship in all of our various channels. So it's building upon multi-channel to provide an omni-channel experience. It's about moving away from thinking like a content manager to becoming a relationship manager. That's what it's about. Now, as I was going through the agenda at Webit, I, was, I saw a lot of things around big data, analytics, content management, campaign management, all of these great stuff, right? I also saw there's a lot of demos that are going to be shown. I think it's wonderful. And as you're going through this, I want you to think about this. Remove the silos of these various technologies. Remove the silos. You can't think about just content management in a silo. You can't just think about analytics in a silo. To really optimize every experience, you need to start to look at having an integrated platform. Being able to drive what's in, uh, what, what analytics I have and leveraging that across my campaign management, across my experiences in social, across the experience in mobile, all of these different channels. So IBM came up with the idea around exceptional digital experience. And at the core of that, is the customer experience suite. Now, you see a lot of things integrated in here. Let me just simplify it. It's about integrated analytics. Integrated analytics with integrated business process management, because you need to have business processes at the end of the day. Right? It's about integrated web content management. How do I leverage the analytics to drive the right kind of content, and how do I easily maintain that content? It's about integrated security, especially in the world today where everyone's on their mobile device, every company is trying to push things out to mobile. I do all of my banking from Singapore in the US on my mobile device. I never actually go to a branch. I can't actually, all right? So integrated security, very, very important. Integrated social, of course, integrated social given that the uh, majority of people now look at Twitter for their news. Integrated collaboration. And the last, but certainly not the least, certainly not the least, is integrated mobility. How do I start to bring all of these pieces together to provide an omni-channel experience? So like how we want to optimize every experience, we need to break down those silos from a technology perspective and start to leverage all of this information together 
to reinvent that relationship. So IBM, as you uh, may or may not know, has been in a lot of these spaces in various aspects. Uh, marketing management, enterprise marketing management, collaboration, portals, all of these things. And of course, instead of listening to what the analysts say, let's think about how we've helped our customers. So let me bring up an example, Wimbledon. Wimbledon is a great example because from a content management perspective, they have many, many uh, reporters out looking and watching the, uh, watching the games, right? They need to be able to upload that information real time from any device, anywhere, so that the websites, the mobile apps are all updated instantly. If I look at City Forward, City Forward is a way to, is bringing together data and big data from, uh, from cities and all of these other place, places and providing that in a social manner to provide a better experience for cities and governments to come up with uh, smarter decisions. And the last one, I think which is really neat, is Yuska Bank here, providing a great experience for their customers, not only on the browser, but also on the mobile device. Very, very neat. Now, the last one, which I certainly love, uh, is, is the Masters, which their goal was to provide a experience that made you feel like you were actually at the Masters. Like you, like you were actually at the Masters. Now, the reason why I think this one is really neat is because yesterday there was a bridge that was closed down. Tiger Woods was here. He was on the same plane as me. I'm just playing. He wasn't. But uh, it was a great experience because he's he hit a ball from Europe to Asia. Anybody catch that? No one? I, I can't see you, so you got to speak up. Yes, you saw it. Was, he, was it a slice or a hook? A little bit of a slice. The news report said it was down the middle, man. Down the middle, because the cars were on the, on the right side. But uh, the one thing I missed, by the way, sorry to detract again, but uh, the one thing I missed was whether or not he actually hit the ball from Europe to Asia. Do you know if he did? No, I couldn't make it. I've, I've never crossed the bridge, I don't know. And, but it could bounce, right? Anyway, I thought it was a great experience, and I, I thought it was a, a great experience for, for me to be here while, uh, while Tiger was here for the Turkish Open. Anyway, when I look at how we've helped our customers and what customers are doing with the omni-channel approach, it's not about what our analysts say, again. It's about how our customers are starting to win awards. It's about how our customers are gaining that return on investment. So when you start to think in this way, when you start to think about reinventing relationships and moving away from content management into becoming a relationship manager, what you'll start to see is an optimized experience, both for your customers and also for your employees. You gotta start thinking about how I break down those silos. And of course, when you're looking at all of these integrated platforms, it's about that customer experience, it's about the mobility, it's about helping your customers win awards for their experiences with their customers. So I'm just gonna change gears a little bit because reinventing relationships is not just about customer experience. It's not just about omni-channel. We certainly want to think about turning into relationship managers, certainly. But to be able to do that, you need to start to think about your employees. Your employees are your biggest assets. How do I help my employees help my customers? That's the first question. How do I help my employees help my customers? Your employees are your, employee, uh, are your brand ambassadors your brand advocates. These are the guys who are out there helping your customers. So my employees are my biggest asset. Now the thing that I heard uh, earlier from Rosario is within a social enterprise, uh, Rosario, by the way, from Open Knowledge, uh, 
within a social enterprise, it's, it'll be great if you have all of this technology. It'd be great if you have an integrated platform. That's wonderful. But if your employees are not ready for this, your company is not ready for this. If your employees are not thinking about optimizing every interaction and building relationships with their customers, your company won't be able to, to do that. So what you got to start thinking about is how we attract, motivate, and empower our employees to start to think about becoming relationship managers. And what IBM looks at is putting technology aside, how do we start to help customers look at their employees, look at their culture, look at how they work, and start to bring in the right kind of talent to help the company? So first part is attract. And I, I, I brought this website up because uh, it's our IBM's Facebook site. It's our way of trying to, to uh, attract the right kind of talent. What do you think IBM wants to put out there as our culture? Anybody? Think? Think about it. No pun intended. It is think. On all of our websites, you'll see the word think. What we want to be known as is an innovation company. What we want to be known as is a company that thinks, right? So IBM's culture is about providing or gaining employees that are thinkers. Now, we've not only done this for ourselves, we've also helped IKEA drive the right kind of culture. What's amazing about IKEA, I don't know if you guys have ever been into multiple IKEAs in, in various parts of the world, I've been in IKEAs in Europe, I've been in IKEAs in the US, uh, now in Asia. What's interesting about the employees is independent of the culture in the country, the culture in the company is the exact same. Does that make sense? Americans, loud, boisterous, don't know a lot. Asians, very different. Europeans, very different. But when you walk into an IKEA, in any part of the world, their employee culture is the same. They're always here to help you. They're always here to direct you to the right place. It's very amazing to see how we can help a company understand their culture and find the right kind of employees to drive their culture. The second part is about motivating employees. How do I drive motivation? And it's not only, again, through technology, it's also about understanding what motivates our employees. So is it gamification? Is it being able to provide them some analytics and some dashboards so they, they can measure themselves? Is it about giving them a collaborative workspace that allows them to voice their opinion? How do we motivate our employees? This is what you guys start thinking about when we start to reinvent our relationships. And the last one, is about empowering your employees. And it's not only about empowering your employees to have the right tools at the right time with the right information. It's about giving them those tools on any device, anytime, anywhere. And not only that, when we're looking at inside the firewall, it's about empowering your employees to have a voice, to have a voice. So with Disney, their employees talk about their company. If you go to the Disney website, you can find what the cast members are saying about how they love working at Disney. These are your brand ambassadors. These are your brand advocates. And with happy employees, you'll have happy customers. Reinvent the relationship, not only with technology, but also empowering your employees to start thinking like relationship managers. So IBM, what I've been talking about, both technology and these behavioral sciences, IBM is really the only one who has these two merged together. And I think it's very important that we look beyond just technology, because you can have the coolest software in the world, but if you don't have the right people to use it, it's going to die. So if you want to learn more, 
We have Connect 2014 coming up. And I want to thank you guys. Let's continue this conversation. Let's have a great conference. Right? Great conference? Yes. And thank you. Thank you so much.